Hi everyone, welcome to The Victor. The Victor is a presentation of the life of Jesus as it happened 2,000 years ago. Jesus Christ was the most incredible person. He was all man, yet He was all God. And He came here to change our lives. He came here to die in our place and to give you a life that is super special and wonderful. Sometimes religion has portrayed Jesus Christ or Christianity as a religion of a whole bunch of things you can't do. Yet the opposite is true. Because of Jesus Christ and the story you're about to see that happened 2,000 years ago, you your life has a future, a destiny. He has given you gifts. He wants a life for you that is wonderful. I believe that people need to see Jesus Christ in a whole new way. And I believe that church needs to be done in a whole new way. We're putting on this presentation as a church because our desire as a church is to help people see Him with the love, the passion, and the joy that He really has for you and I. So sit back, relax, and enjoy as you see this drama presentation that happened, really happened, 2,000 years ago. To being with words, words that formed the great mountains and seas, the great rivers, the deep forests, herds of animals that covered the land as far as the horizon, even the fragile butterfly. He wrapped it all in a day that shone in a night sparkled and into this creation he placed his delight a man and a woman companions someone whom he could love and be loved by someone he could talk to in the cool of the evening but these children chose to turn away to follow pride and disobedience into darkness. But God so loved the world, He could not bear to be separated from His children forever. So, in the perfect place and time, He came again. He touched and taught, ate and laughed with His children. And then he humbled himself and taken the weight of all their pride and disobedience. He died on a cross. But that cross spanned the darkness of sin once and for all. And light shone on God's creation once again. An angel appeared to me, a carpenter, and said, Joseph, do not be afraid to take Mary for your wife. She will give birth to a son, and you are to call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Joseph. For generations, God's people waited for their coming king, the great Messiah whose glory had been foretold by the prophets. But while they watched for the amazing and the spectacular, a baby boy named Jesus was born right in their midst, and they didn't even know who he was. No one knew, no one but his mother and I. Year after year, the people had watched and waited. And then he came, not as a warrior, but as a baby. Not as a prince, 
but a peasant. As a young man, he studied and worshipped in the temple. And in my carpenter shop, he learned a trade. But we always knew he could not stay. As his mother, I had been part of the beautiful mystery of it all from the beginning when the angel came to me. So of course, I knew who he was. But the world that watched the unfolding of his life would have to decide, apart from any angelic revelation, what to make of Jesus. Each person who heard his words or saw his miracles from the highest official to the smallest child, they would have to choose. Choose whether to believe in him or not. Choose whether to follow or turn away. For 30 years, he had lived quietly among us. And through all those years, I held on to the angel's promise that my son would be called the Most High. But it was not until my cousin's son, John, began preaching in the desert about a coming Messiah that I could feel the angel's promise beginning to be fulfilled. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom is upon us. What must we do? Repent. Confess your sins to God. Come. Come to the river. Repent and be baptized. What must I do? Well, you, you have two coats. Give one to this man. And you, tax gatherer, collect no more than what is due. And you, falsely accuse no one. Confess your sins to God. And turn away from the past and seek the truth.
baptized for the forgiveness of sin. You brood of vipers! Do you come here to seek escape from God's wrath? What? There is no wrath for God's people. You say you are descendants of Abraham. But I tell you, God does not see your rules or your rituals. Only your selfish pride. The axe is ready. And any tree that does not bear good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. Come now. Away to the river. Wait. Who are you? Are you? I am not the Messiah. What then? Give me an answer for those who have sent me. Who are you? I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness to give hope to those who have gone astray. I baptize with water, but the one who comes after me is much, much greater than I. I am not even worthy to remove his sandals. And he, he shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. The Holy Spirit descended upon him like a dove, and a mighty voice echoed across the desert, saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, where he fasted and was tempted by the devil, and he resisted the temptation by the word of God. When forty days were completed, he came to Nazareth, to the synagogue, for it was the Sabbath. He was asked to read from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty for the captives, and give sight to the blind to free those who are oppressed, to proclaim the time of the Lord's salvation. When he had finished reading, he said, Today the scriptures have been fulfilled in your hearing. They were astonished that this man they'd known as a simple carpenter would make such a claim. Some hoped in their hearts that it might be true. Yet the crowd rose up to destroy him for such blasphemy. As Jesus was walking by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon Peter and Andrew, and he called to them, Come, put down your nets, Follow me and I will make you fishers of men. And they immediately left their nets and all that they knew and followed him. And he called ten others, James and John, the sons of Zebedee. Philip and Bartholomew. Thomas. James of Alphaeus, even Matthew, the despised tax gatherer. What are you looking at? Prophet? A tax collector? A sinner? I know what I am. At least I'm not a hypocrite, pretending to be something I'm not. I see a small boy who loved much and trusted much 
but who is betrayed by those he loved. Matthew, follow me. And he called Thaddeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas Iscariot, who would betray him. News of his teachings and miracles spread quickly, and great crowds began following Jesus. Beloved, do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy, where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Snakes! Vipers! That's what John called you? Why do you neglect the commands of God while holding fast to the traditions of men? When you pray, do not be as the hypocrites, for they love to stand on the street corners praying loudly to be seen by men. When you pray, seek God's ear, and he will hear you. Friends, why do you say to your brother, Brother, let me take that speck out of your eye. And all the while you have a log in your own. <laughs> First, take the log out of your own eye so that you can see clearly. When he talked, even to a crowd, it seemed as though he was talking just to you. He taught us to look at the world through his eyes. He showed us God's grace in a field of flowers, or his provision in the flight of a sparrow. He had a way of looking into people and seeing beyond what was to what was possible. Everyone else saw only my recklessness, but he called me Peter the Rock. Sometimes he seemed the most ordinary of men. But then, he'd do something that would amaze us. Once, he spoke a word and the storm was still. At another time, he took one small basket of food and he fed thousands and thousands of people. But with him, we learned to accept the amazing and expect the impossible. For he came to bind up the brokenhearted, proclaim freedom for the captive, and release for the prisoners. He cared deeply about each small life, its hopes and fears and secret dreams. And as he touched our world in his Father's name, he did it by looking into one face, one heart, one life at a time. He was a man who left with children, who was not ashamed. Stop to listen for the world hurried by. He didn't shake a million hands or change a million minds. He simply changed the whole.
Don't bother the master. Go away. Unless you become as one of these little ones, you'll have no part in my father's kingdom. If a man has a hundred sheep and one goes astray, will he not leave the ninety-nine and go after the one? And when he finds that one, will he not rejoice over it more than the ninety-nine? I am the good shepherd who lays down his life for the sheep. One life at a time. Thank you, Jesus. Woman, get up, get up and walk, stand back, move aside, stand back, stand back, get up and walk, woman. This woman was caught in adultery. The law of Moses says that such a woman should be stoned. What do you say, teacher? He who is 
stands perfect and without sin, cast the first stone. woman does no one condemn you neither do I go your way and sin no more
walked, the blind saw, and now the dead are alive? Oh, the people were amazed, and they praised the God of Israel. Jesus drew crowds, amazing the people with his teachings and miracles. He healed the sick. He delivered the insane. And now he raised the dead. Even those who walked among us, whose hearts lay bound in chains, in prisons darker than the blackest nights, he set free. But it was who he was that drew us. There was nothing self-righteous or religious about him. He ate with Pharisees, and he ate with sinners. He spoke in synagogues, and he spoke on mountainsides. He touched the bodies, the hearts, and the mind of all those who came to him in faith. There was a woman who had an issue of blood for 12 years. She spent all she had on doctors, and yet it grew worse. But when she heard of Jesus, she determined in her heart that if she could just touch the hem of his garment, that she would be healed. And so she was. Who touched me? Well, Lord, look at the crowd. Your faith has made you well. And then he sent us out, his disciples and his followers. And in his name, the sick were healed. He gave us authority and the demons fled. For three years we traveled learning and growing, and every day our eyes were open to new truths. There was one time, as Jesus was passing by a certain village, he was met by ten men who had leprosy. Jesus, Master, have mercy on us, they cried out. And so Jesus sent them to be declared clean by the priest. And as they went, they were healed. Look, 
where are the others? Has only this foreigner come back to give glory to God? Your faith has made you whole. As Jesus was approaching Jerusalem, the whole crowd began to rejoice. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Glory in the highest. But the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, tell your disciples to stop shouting. I tell you, Jesus replied, if they stop shouting, the rocks will cry out. <laughs> For three years, Jesus walked the countryside teaching the great crowds. And oh, what we saw, withered hands, twisted bodies, broken spirits made whole before our eyes. But his teachings, his radical departure from our religious customs enraged the religious leaders of Israel. 
As a Pharisee myself, I had to be careful. I came to him by night. I just had to know, was he Messiah or just another who'd come and would quickly fade away? So I went. It was a dark little room. He spoke in mysteries of a kingdom not of this world, of being born again. How can a man be born when he is already old? And then I saw, I knew, the offer of eternal life to those who would only believe. The feast of the Passover brought thousands into the city of Jerusalem. They came to make a sacrifice to cover their sins for another year. The crowds were enormous, and family and friends did not come to discuss the Passover, but rather, would Jesus come? Would he perform his miracles? Was he Messiah?
As Jesus passed through Jericho on his way to Jerusalem and to the Passover, a blind beggar named Bartimaeus was begging by the side of the road. He cried out to Jesus, Lord, Lord, have mercy on me. I want to see. Your faith has made you well. I can't see! I can't see! I can't see! I can't see! I can't see. I can't see. As thousands ushered the new king into Jerusalem, only Jesus knew how quickly the cheers would change to curses and shouts of praise to accusation. Many hoped he would wield political power and crush Rome's tyranny. Only Jesus knew where his power came from and what kingdoms it would conquer. As Jesus entered the temple to teach and to pray, the stench and the racket of an animal market met him. As usual, the outer courts were filled, not with praises, not with prayers as God had designed, but with the authorities who refused the people's offerings, telling them they were impure and imperfect and selling them temple animals for sacrifice. A month's food for a dove, two months' wages for a lamb, thieves defiling the temple, robbing the people, and all under the guise of holiness. quickly things can change. The desperate, hopeful voices that had hailed him as Messiah and King were now questioning just what that kingdom would mean. The religious leaders recognized their opportunity to destroy him. The plot of lies and deception and bribery began. In a quiet upper room, Jesus gathered with his friends to share the feast of the Passover.
take this bread and take this cup. Remember when you eat and drink, this is my body and this is my blood that I give for you. my body take this broken bread drink the cup it is my blood that sheds though you may not understand what I must do With a basin and a towel, I offer up myself for you. I have come to serve. You might know the truth. To give yourself. Love demands a sacrifice Greater far than words Let the record show I have come to serve You can't wash my feet! Unless I wash you, Peter, you'll have no part in my father's kingdom. Then, Lord, not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Father, I now complete the work which you gave me to do in this world, to give eternal life. I come to you. Friends, dear friends, if you love me, keep my commands. Love one another as I have loved you. I am the vine and you are the branches. He who lives in me 
will live forever. I go to prepare a place for you in my Father's house. Where I go, you cannot follow. You will come later. But Lord, where are you going? And how will we know the way? Thomas, the Holy Spirit whom the Father will send in my name will guide you in the truth. If I do not go away, the Comforter will not come. I am the way and the truth and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Yet one of you will betray me. No, 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 no. I say he who dips his hand with me in the dish will betray me. Is it I? Teacher? Judas. Judas. What is he doing? Lord, I am ready to go with you to prison and to death. Are you Peter? The rooster will not crow today until you three times deny that you even know me. Leaving together from the meal in the upper room, they crossed over the brook Kidron and there entered into a garden. Telling his disciples to watch there and pray, Jesus went on a little further in order to be alone, to face the bitter cup of Calvary's cross. Yet much more than suffering and shame that cup held. For the first time in eternity, separation from his father. But he did not turn back. This is the cup he had come to drink, the road he had come to walk for us. Could you sleep if you knew what tonight held? Could you even understand my father's plan? A single word, a breath of a plea, and the agony would never happen. sleep. Legions of angels wait to save me, but in calling them, I would lose you, and the world would go its own way. That's too high a price. Father, if it is not possible for this cup to pass from me, not my will be done. My friends, my confidants, why are you sleeping? Could you not watch? Could you not pray? Could you not find the strength to stay awake with me? If you knew what I know, feeling what I feel, you would stand beside me facing this ordeal if you could see into tomorrow for a moment feel my sorrow if you knew what I am you would know the cost that's hanging in the balance hanging on the cross if the weight of all the world was on your My love strong enough to hold me, or will nails have to? 
night he was dragged and beaten first to Caiaphas then to Pilate to Herod and back to Pilate most of us had fled in fear but I followed in the shadows uh, do you think Pilate would mind if a cold stranger warmed himself? Stay out of the way! We're busy enough tonight without tripping over straight Jews! Pontius Pilate, Your Excellency, we are grateful for this audience, sire. Hi, priest Caiaphas. Well, this had better be important to have awakened me. So what charges do you bring against this man that you need Rome's involvement? Sire, this is Jesus of Nazareth, the blasphemer the people are claiming as their king. Jewish lunacy, I've heard the stories. Sire, if he were not a criminal, I would not have delivered him up to you. Your, your charge is Caiaphas. He has said he shall tear down the temple and in three days restore it. More Jewish lunacy. Caiaphas, even my wife has seen this man in her nightmares. He may be many things, but there's been no crime against Rome. Guards, see them out. But you can't. I mean, Your Excellency, according to Jewish law, he must die. He claims to be the Son of God. Jesus? You hear their accusations? Who are you? Where do you come from? Speak to me! Don't you know who I am? I have the power to free you. Or to crucify you. 
People, I find no basis for the charges against this man. According to custom, I can release one prisoner at Passover. Who would you have me release? The murderer, Barabbas, or Jesus? Barabbas, we won! What then shall I do with Jesus, called the Messiah? Crucify him! Crucify him! this man oh, Jesus my Jesus what have I done <laughs> and then they beat my loving Jesus they spit on my precious Jesus they dressed him in a purple robe they placed a crown of thorns upon his head and they pressed it down. Oh, they pressed it down. And they mocked my sweet King Jesus. Up Golgotha's rugged road, I see my Jesus go. I see him sink beneath the load. I see my sweet King Jesus. <laughs>
Truly, this must have been the Son of God. Should have been my feet where the nails were. 
when you don't understand, when you don't see his plan, when you can't trace his hand. Trust his heart. <laughs>
You should have seen the signs. Jesus, of the family of David, born in Bethlehem. The whole 22nd Psalm predicted the Messiah. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? All who see me mock me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. They cast lots for my clothing. Even those words of love, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. All prophesied. But now where was our Messiah, our Savior? The humiliation of the cross, the finality of the grave. Together they conspired to end all hope that Jesus was truly the Christ, the Son of God. Even the faithful were filled with doubt as they made their way towards the tomb in Sunday's early light. Could they still call him Messiah? Could they still call him king? The women couldn't sleep. And they could think of nothing else. And on the morning of the third day, they were out taking their precious ointments to anoint his body. But when they arrived, a stone was rolled away. And the tomb was empty. And an angel dressed in white appeared to them and said, He is not here, for he is risen. spoken by the angel to Joseph has finally come to pass. Jesus has saved his people from their sins. King Jesus, Jesus the Christ, risen victorious, victorious over our fears, our doubts, victor over sickness, over disease, victor over the bondage of sin, victor over death and the grave. My peace be to you. All things have happened as written by the prophets in the scriptures. That I would suffer 
and die and rise again on the third day. All these things you've seen. Others see with earthly eyes just what they want to see. You will know the things that never die. You will know and recognize by simple child like me the priceless truth that others will deny. Others say I'm just a man who likes to dream his dream. When others call a miracle a myth, you listen for eternity in moments as they pass and see with spirit eyes what others miss. In a simple carpenter, you see the Son of God. If you would choose to lose when you could win. If you'd give your life away for nothing in return. And you are where my kingdom will begin. Go into all the world and preach the good news. Teach them all that I have taught you. And those who believe in me and in my words will live forever in my Father's kingdom. And lo, I will be with you always 
even to the end of the world. People wonder about the story of the cross. A lot of people wonder what it has to do with life today. When God originally made man, he made man to be his children like his family. And because of what Adam and Eve did in the garden, they slipped away and man began to pursue evil and became evil. When Jesus died on the cross, John called him the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And that's exactly what he did. God allowed the picture you saw today that happened 2,000 years ago, he allowed this Jesus Christ to take our sin, disease, sickness, everything you've ever done wrong was forgiven 2,000 years ago. And today, all you need to do is to pray a prayer with your mouth 
mean it with your heart, and God adopts you into his family, calls you forgiven, calls you his son, his daughter, and literally has a plan for your life that he'll begin to put into effect when you pray this prayer and mean it. You know, the prayer of salvation is a prayer that is used across the denominations. Everyone believes in that prayer. And I want to lead you in that prayer tonight because I think it is the most fitting closing of this part of tonight. And so I'm going to lead you in the prayer that anybody can pray at any time. And when you say it with your mouth, remember, and when you mean it with your heart, this Jesus Christ becomes your Lord and Savior. The Bible actually says that the presence of God comes into your life, makes you a brand new being, and you have His power, His love, His grace, and the ability to live your life on a whole different plane with the power of God. Would you repeat this prayer with me out loud as we close this down tonight by praying this powerful prayer with me? It goes like this. Father, in Jesus' name, I ask you to forgive me for everything that I've done wrong, all of it. I give you my life. I want to serve you. I want to be in your family from this day on. I declare Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior, and I will serve him. Amen. If you prayed that prayer tonight for the very first time, or you're coming back to Jesus, rededicating your life to him, I encourage you to let somebody know and get back out here to service. Get into church and learn all about the new life that God has given you. God bless you. And you're dismissed. Thank you.